Hello YouTube, we're size 17 here, but you can just call me Travis, and welcome back to another collection update. Uh, as per usual, I have nothing worthy of note, so uh, let's just uh, talk about some music, got a wide variety of stuff to talk to you about. Alright, so in the background we're listening to, uh, just got, I just showed this off the other day, uh, The Room of Shadows, uh, 2017 release from Pagan Altar. Uh, yeah, the more and more I listen to this album, the more and more I love it. Um, I'm just constantly uh, just changing my my I'm, which um, which, uh, which song is my favorite, which only tells me how much I love this album. Yeah, just yeah, just really into this release. Love it a lot. I'm, uh, I'm very uh, looking forward to getting into their back catalog because they're a band that is very new to me. All right, first up, this is a uh, reissue that just came out. Uh, this is Crowlock. good art there uh with when the moon sang our songs like i said this is a reissue this is out on inferna profundus records uh like i said again reissue from what 2014 uh originally was uh limited to very small quantities i think it was like 24 cassettes and then like 33 lathe cut records so yeah pretty much you know combined both uh both media types uh, still on, under 100 copies, so pretty, pretty limited. So uh, yeah, when this popped up on Bandcamp, jumped at it immediately. Uh, now two of these songs, uh, Ride a Roan Steed and The Violet Castle in the Sky. Uh, I was familiar with those uh, two songs very recently because they were bonus tracks on uh, a reissue of an EP they just put out for At the End of a New Age. So. Uh, that was pretty cool, uh, except these are, uh, this whole record as a whole, is a much more like uh, primitive recording, uh, so it was kind of cool to hear a different version of those songs. Uh, I wouldn't say that the primitive recording uh, uh, really neg negatively impacts uh, this album at all. Uh, I certainly myself prefer the more cleaned up stuff, but uh, you know, it, it certainly is, you know, uh, it fits in with the style of, uh, of the music. I just think that the cleaned up uh, stuff uh, enhances the more melodic passages of this band, but to each his own. Uh, also, uh, third track, "When Thousand Moon Have Circled," Carpathian Forest cover. Uh, yeah, just overall, uh, I love the art on this digi pack. I'm always into the uh, the black and white uh, wa washed out uh, look. lyrics there. Now it says that Cosmic Rituals, the last track, which is just like an ambient track, uh, it says it's a bonus track, but it's on the cassette and the and the, and the record also, so I don't know, it must just be, I guess it's not considered part of the album. So yeah. Anyway, cool stuff. If you're into, if you're into, if you've into this band at all, uh, definitely check this out. You'll be into it. Uh, cool, uh, sort of seven second wavy, more melodic y kind of black metal. Uh, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely cool stuff. Uh, band from Slovakia. I don't think I said. I don't know why I want to drop this one so much. Uh, band of Slovakia. I don't think I said that. So yeah, Quirlock with When the Moon Sang Our Songs. All right, next up, couple set cassettes. Uh, I, I already had this release on uh, record, uh, but at a moment you'll see why I just had to pounce on the cassette. Uh, this is Stallion with Mounting the World. Uh, this is an EP that came out in like 2013, I believe. German new wave of traditional heavy metal. Uh, one of my favorites of the genre. Their album from last year, uh, From the Dead, uh, was like top 10, number 8, maybe. So yeah, definitely into this band a lot. Comes on this uh, white cassette with the red imprinting. And then on the B-side, this is the reason why I just had to have it. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Had to have it. Uh, yeah. No shame. No shame at all. Uh, limited to 
200 copies on. Pull it out here for you. To, limited to 200 copies on Rapid Fire Records. A uh, label that's sort of associated with Graven Earth Records. Nice, uh, good quality J card here with some uh, pictures and lyrics. And uh, yeah, I just like the just you know the overall red and white aesthetic all the way through and through. It looks really really nice. I like it even with the uh, white backed uh, cassette case. So, yeah, beautiful. Uh, while I was there, I wanted to pick up something else and uh, came across this. And uh, even though I definitely did not need it, I, uh, I could not resist. And that is uh, this is uh, Air Raid with Across the Line. This is another new wave of traditional heavy metal band. And this album in particular came out last year and was my number two album of the year, just behind the self-titled Satan Hallows record. But really, uh, I kind of think of this album as 1B because it's it's really freaking good. Uh, I really like it a lot. Uh, limited to 150 copies. I got number 134. Uh, out on, uh, what is it, Witchcraft Records, which may or may not be associated with High Roller Records because the High Roller Records logo is also on there. Uh, it looks like they're a new, maybe cassette only label out of Spain. Uh, but yep, good stuff. It comes came on a red, bl a red, blue, and black sets. Obviously, this is the uh, the black one with some red imprinting. There, you can kind of see it there better. Uh, I definitely don't need this, so I'll probably add this to my seemingly ever -grow a growing pile of, of stuff that I'll give away that I'm just. I buy because I'm addicted to buying, especially cassettes. So yeah, uh, great release. Love it a lot. De I'll leave links as I always do. Definitely check out uh, this release in particular because I think it's really, really, really strong. Ah. Anyway, Air Raid, Across the Line. Awesome release. Because I'm a nice guy. You one last look at this beautiful stallion cassette. I think it's still available. I'll leave a link. You can go get your own. All right. Next up, this is kind of like a progressive metal, progressive rock, uh, kind of a release. Uh, this is the Earthbound Papas with Dancing Dad. Uh, if you are familiar with this release, uh, you will know that this is a project uh, from uh, mostly known as a video game composer, uh, Nabu Omatsu, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which I may or may not be. Uh, he is mostly known from doing uh, most of the, the more uh, classic uh, Final Fantasy titles. Uh, and that's sort of what's going on here with this release. Uh, he had previously been in a band that was virtually identical, at least in sound, uh, called The Black Mages, which uh, predominantly was just doing progressive metal, progressive rock covers of his uh, his video game compositions. Uh, firstly, I love the video game compositions. Uh, there will be an upcoming video about Nobuo Amatsu and Black Mages and Earthbound Papas. I was just waiting for this to arrive. Uh, that'll be coming soon. Uh, Anyway, I love the video game versions, and uh, so hearing the progressive rock metal versions uh, is just... I've always been super, super into it. Those albums are awesome. And then uh, something happened. He left uh, the game. I think Square Enix is what they were at the time. And so it's due to... Uh, I'm not really sure how... Legalities of something of... Some of the people who still work there, he no longer did. Uh, he couldn't really continue on uh, with the band The Black Mages. So this is just, uh, you know, a different version of the Black Mages, just with different members. Uh, he does seem to cover uh, not necessarily mostly Final Fantasy uh, tracks with the Earthbound Pro uh, Papa's group, although he did that a fair amount with the Black Mages too. But uh, it seems to happen more often on uh, with this group. 
but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, this is some cool stuff. Uh, really, really into it. Finally, happy to uh, to finally pick this up. Back uh, back in February, when uh, Eric Bauer was doing uh, his video on soundtracks and had uh, came up to the topic for a contest to do one about soundtracks, uh, my initial thought was to kind of be uh, out of left field and do them on the Nobuo Matsu Final Fantasy soundtracks, as I have uh, quite a few of them, and uh, ultimately decided that I uh, I didn't want to do it do that. Uh, but instead, would would finally get around to ordering this release and then do the video that you will you will see at some point soon. Uh, and uh, this case was uh, originally uh, the, the the distro that I was had this saved for was some import uh, distro out of Japan. I can't tell you what the name of it was. Uh, anyway, it was super expensive. I was gonna have to pay like forty bucks for it, which you know I think is how much I probably paid for. Uh, Octopus Theory, which was the first release by this band, uh, but you know, paying forty bucks for a CD is kind of outrageous, and you know, it's hard to do. And uh, anyway, before I before I made the plunge, I, I, I did I did one final search and actually came across this other label from France called Le Fait Sauvage or something like that. And anyway, it was considerably cheaper. Uh, I still ended up paying like twenty five bucks for it, uh, but, you know, considering I was about to pay 40-something for it, it was a welcome change, especially since, uh, this version came with a bonus disc, so that was, you know, even more so. So I ordered it back in February, and then maybe, uh, <laughs> I think it was, uh, April 10th, as it still had not arrived, uh, I emailed the, uh, the company, I was like, hey, can I just get a status, uh, order? And uh, a few days later, I got a reply. Oh, no, actually, it was 10 days later. It was the 20th. Uh, I got a reply saying, yes, uh, sorry for the delay in the processing of the order. It is now shipped. So <laughs> I was kind of like, really? That was annoying. Uh, I will say they stepped up to the plate, probably realizing that it uh, should have been shipped previously to that. And they did... Uh, they paid like 12 euro air shipping came to me like within five days so while I did have to wait much longer than I should have had to uh, I will uh, uh, give them props for uh, for uh, not just you know sending it how they would have had previously and uh, you know probably taking a loss on the CD by by spending 12 euros on the shipping to get it to me fast so that was cool regardless of the overall situation anyway Cool release, uh, Dancing Dad, a sort of a, a, a uh, reference to the title track, the title of a track called Dancing Mad from Final Fantasy VI, probably my all-time favorite video game. Uh, inside we got some uh, lyrics, which obviously are not readable for me, but I always enjoy looking at that kind of stuff. Pictures, there's our guy Nobuo Matsu plays keyboards for this band. But yeah, uh, awesome stuff. If you're I think even if you're not into uh, you know knowing the the video game uh, music, you you probably still be into this. This is uh, you know, it's very progressive, cool uh, solos and leads and stuff. Uh, I really do think his compositions uh, Translate to to rock music very easily and very and very well. So yeah, Dancing Mad, the Earthbound Papas. Uh, look forward to the Nobuo Matsu. Uh, I don't know homage video or whatever you want to call it. Upcoming soon. Yeah, and then the bonus disc. I'm not really sure what it is really. Uh, it's it's just uh, the only thing I can I can decide is it's that's different uh, takes of other songs that are on the disc one. Uh, I haven't, to be honest, listened to them closely enough back to back to decide if they actually are all are alternative takes. But uh, whatever. Even without it, it was still again considerably cheaper. So very happy to pick it up finally. Uh, this was released back in like 2000. 
I don't know, 14 or something, 2012. It's been a while. So I'm hoping, he, I don't know if this band is still active. I'm hoping that it is, because I would love to hear uh, more stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure what year. Yeah, anyway. Dancing Dad, Earthbound Papas. Japanese video game composer Nobuo Matsu. His uh, progressive metal band. All right. Uh, next up, this one sort of straddles that line of metal and synthwave, which is perfect for me right now. Uh, this is the new one out uh, for the first time uh, with this band on Blood Music, which is a perfect label for them. This is a Master Boot record with direct memory access. Uh, if you are not familiar with this band, this is a uh, electronic uh, synthwave chip tune. I guess an uh, artist out of France uh, who does, like I said, it's electronic synthwave, chiptune, it's in that realm. But man, everything that he composes is uh, like 100% through the lens of composing metal music. Uh, it's really, it's riffy, it's got leads. Uh, let me put it this way, it's not, it, there's no guitars or real drums, everything's synthesized. But it's accepted in metal archives, and you know how it is with them. You know, sometimes uh, they can be really, I don't know, anal about what's metal and what's not. So I think the fact that electronic artists can, uh, can break the mold, I think, maybe says something. But yeah, anyway, uh, definitely check out this artist if you haven't. Uh, I really think that what he's doing is, is, really, is really interesting and uh, unique. Uh, again, like I said, it's all synthesized music, but it, it, is, it, is, it is metal. Uh, like I said, it, it's riffy, uh, awesome leads, uh, the drumming is awesome, uh, in particular, uh, DMA5 hard disc, uh, the drumming on that one is, is awesome, uh, in, in particular, like the very, very ending of the song, where, uh, he just really up-tempos that double bass and just like, it's just like full throttle intensity, yeah, awesome stuff. Uh, for the first time ever, this is uh, the first release uh, from Master Boot Record to have vocals on it, uh, featuring vocals uh, from a guy known as, uh, I'll show it here, because I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce this correctly, here it is on the hype sticker, uh, his name is Oxo Zooks. Uh, you might be familiar with that guy, he is for, uh, in a band called uh, Igor, uh, also, he's in a band called Oxozooks, again, if that's how you pronounce that, who also also has the guy Igor from the band Igor in it. So, uh, yeah, as you might expect, uh, the vocals uh, for uh, for this release by Oxozooks are uh, they're very interesting. Uh, clean and uh, harsh as both, and, uh, you know, both just kind of, like, inexplicably, I don't know, weird. Uh kind of, for me, I, 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 I like the vocals, but it's, it's, for the most part, I, I, I kind of find them distracting, to be honest. And uh, for someone who likes, uh, you know, a Master Boot record, uh, previous to hearing anything with vocals, uh, I don't know if I'd say it's a negative, but I kind of didn't like it, <clears throat> for the most part, I guess, overall. So yeah, when I, you know, it's uh, the first track didn't have vocals, and then uh, two through five did. And so I was starting to get a little worried, like, oh, does the rest of the release have vocals on it? But that's it. It was just four tracks. So four tracks have vocals. Four tracks do not. Uh, I do think uh, I do think it, somewhere there's uh, the instrumental versions of uh, the tracks are somewhere. I haven't listened to them, but I think they're out there. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe someone else, I'm sure someone else might disagree with me and maybe they'll think that the vocals uh, either makes Master Boot Record something they even want to listen to at all, or maybe they already like the uh, Master Boot Record and they think this takes them to the next level. So yeah, definitely uh, don't take my word for it. Uh, listen to it for yourself and decide if you think Oxozooks is a positive, a negative, or a, uh, you know, doesn't do either way. But anyway, it uh, doesn't matter. Still a really cool release. I'm into it a lot. Uh, I really think, like I said, the Master Boot Record is doing some cool stuff. And uh, I, I kind of really don't feel like anyone really is doing anything uh, the way he's doing it. So uh, definitely check it out if that sounds interesting to you. Again, this is Direct Memory Access and on Blood Music. Uh, Master Boot Record. 
All right. All right now we're into the fully uh, synthwave portion of the video. Uh, first up, this is a new release out on uh, I don't know a few labels. No quarter, Le Arm, a VIP, a VIP maybe, and Caroline International. Not really from any of those. Some of sure any of them are majors or ones more than the other. But uh, this is a uh, Carpenter Brute with uh, leather teeth. Uh, this is a band that was sort of on my radio for a while, but I've never actually listened to them before. Uh, but uh, really getting into Synthwave uh, a few months ago or a month ago or whatever when it was. Uh, this one uh, obviously immediately popped up. And uh, and yeah, uh, the opening track, the title track, Leather Teeth. Whew, that one is a doozy, man. That is definitely one of my favorite tracks of this of this year. Uh, man, that one hits friggin' hard. Uh, love that song. Uh but I will say that Cheerle Cheerleader Effect, uh, the second track, actually is uh, easily my least favorite track on this album. So uh, I'll, I'll admit that my first uh, listen to this album, I sort of got turned off by by uh, the the difference in how much I liked those two songs. And uh, as I'm off, often a slave to my uh, my own wild emotions when listening to music it sort of put me off, and I, I kind of it kind of just like kind of ignored this album a little bit. But uh, I kept on popping up, and I kept on returning back to Leather Teeth over and over because, like I said, that album rules. If you do nothing else from this video, even if you don't like synthwave, listen to this album. Even if you hate me after you listen to it, uh, and I finally got to that point on Bandcamp where. I, it, it makes me say, oh, you should buy this, or I have to click no thanks, and it break, does the heartbreak thing, which, by the way, Bandcamp is total soul-crushing emotional manipulation, uh, but it worked, because I finally went over and ordered the CD, and uh, I'm very happy that I did, because this album's really good, uh, just, you know, really, really solid, awesome synthwave, uh, you know, vocals on a couple tracks, uh, and yeah, just really, 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 really strong stuff, uh, nothing that quite gets to the, uh, the uh, amazing levels of leather teeth for me, but uh, there's some really, really uh, cool tracks on here. Also, really like this is a fun little thing to try to spot references and that kind of stuff. You're into that kind of. Sorry about that. If you're into that kind of, you know, pick out references and that kind of thing, kind of like, uh, if you're into like trying to find stuff on the Somewhere in Time, uh, Iron Maiden art, you'll be, uh, you'll be into looking, looking at this. What's behind the CD? I just, nothing special. So yeah, Carpenter Brew. Uh, Leather Teeth. I'll definitely have to check out uh, their other stuff, as I know they've got at least a couple other ones. Trilogy, something else. Uh, yeah, Carpenter Brute, Leather Teeth. Awesome stuff. If you're in the synth wave, uh, you're probably already listening to this, but if you haven't, check it out. All right, next up, this is a band I'm really into right now. This is uh, Cluster Buster, and this is their release, Total Terror, uh, released out on Future 80s Records. Uh, out on this cool hyper neon whatever orange tape which uh, seems to be probably uh, spray painted but whatever <clears throat> uh, yep I uh, ordered this recently with the 40% the off deal which uh, even with the 40% off is still was at the height of how much I want to pay for a cassette but a uh, little cluster buster so even so, I'm still happy that I did it. I uh, love this release. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with this release or this artist, uh, just uh, synthwave, very horror-infused, uh, uh, just really great stuff. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I can't get much more you know distinct than that. It's 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 electronic music, synthwave, sounds like horror stuff. Would make great for a horror movie soundtrack. Not really much going on with J Card. Yeah, uh, definitely in particular like the track. 
cleavage versus cleaver. A, because I am irrationally into cleavers. Uh, that's not as weird as it sounds. And also, I also like the idea of uh, grindcore bands kicking themselves for not having thought of that album title themselves. Or that uh, song title themselves. Uh, maybe a grindcore band already has that title, but maybe not. I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is released on a CD also in very limited quantities. I uh, didn't really think that I would actually ever come across it, so uh, jumped at the uh, chance at buying this with the 40% off when I could. I'm glad that I did because now it is sold out. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, super into this band. Uh, definitely will be uh, trying to snag anything that I can come across of their, of their material physically. Yeah, total terror. By a cluster buster. All right. Lastly, in the uh, synthwave portion, we have uh, Lamatos with the Chronicles of the Wasteland, or the soundtrack, or and or the soundtrack to the movie, movie Turbo Kid. Um, this is uh, this is a, a band Lamatos that I came across uh, when I when I watched the movie Turbo Kid, uh, which. Uh, I watched in I think maybe 2016 when it came onto Netflix. I did check; it is still there. So if you have access to uh, to Netflix and you like anything 80s or anything that wants to be 80s, uh, I think you'll definitely dig that movie. It is a lot of fun. And uh, anyway, uh, I was watching that movie and I was really digging the electronic synthy uh, soundtrack. And uh, when the credits finally rolled. I, uh, I definitely looked out to see who had done the music, and uh, it was two guys who had uh, Jean hyphenated first names. Uh, they're actually both French Canadian, so that's what's up with that. Yeah, their names are Jean Flip, Berner, or Bernier, Bernier, and Jean Nicolas Lippi. I'm not sure. If I'm, gonna, I'm sure. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. I'm not trying to make fun. That's me trying to pronounce French names. Uh, there's their names there. Anyway, uh, so I looked up those names on the internet and what I came across is they were in an electronic uh, synth art artist called Lamatos. Uh, at the time, the only thing I could come across uh, to listen to was I, could, I found a download of an album called... Uh, just us or inside us or something like that anyway i downloaded it and i was i was pretty into it it was pretty cool uh and then uh when this when i came across this on Bandcamp sometime last year uh i immediately added it to my wish list and uh and then uh then recently when i've you know obviously been super into synthwave it seemed like the the right time to pull the trigger so it did and, uh, yep, comes in this cool, I guess, uh, you know, dual disc, gatefold, digipack, uh, presentation. Again, always not into the slide-out disc, uh, thing, but, you know, what are you gonna do? First disc is the Chronicles of the Wasteland, and the second disc is the soundtrack to Turbo Kid. I'm not really sure what that really means as this music on Chronicles of the Wasteland is, I don't know, it sounds like it's part of the soundtrack to Turbo Kid to me. So I don't know if it's like additional tracks that sort of separated out into an album or, I'm, I don't know, I should have should have researched that more. But anyway, uh, the two releases are separated out as Chronicles of the Wasteland on uh, disc one and then the Turbo Kid soundtrack on disc two. Uh, generally speaking, uh, these tracks are much more, uh, much shorter, and these ones are much longer. Maybe that was uh, the main difference, but uh, that being said, uh, they're, they're, they're not all short on this side, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Anyway, cool stuff from a cool movie. I uh, definitely recommend you, uh, like I said, if you're into the 80s or anything that uh, wants to emulate the 80s, uh, check out the movie, check out this music, and like I said, it's on Netflix, so just, uh, you know, it's probably 90 to 100 minutes, so if you got if you got some time to spare, uh, check it out. I need to pick it up on DVD myself. 
So yeah, Lamatos with Chronicles of the Wasteland or the soundtrack to Turbo Kid. All right, now we get into the uh, the pop uh, the pop portion of uh, of my video. Uh, this is a this is a long overdue pickup. This is the debut album from Austin Mahoney, The Secret. Uh, if you're not familiar with Austin Mahoney, which I will assume most of you probably aren't, uh, he is a pop artist out of uh, out of Texas. Uh, and when I say pop, I mean probably you know, to, to most of you, I would say probably he's sort of like I mean uh, Justin Bieber, Jason. I'd probably say is a fair comparison uh, to him. Kind of a, uh, something about this CD design kind of annoys me. It's kind of boring and annoying. Uh, what I really like about Austin Mahoney in particular is his frequent work with the producer Red One. Big Red One fan. Uh, if you've heard me speak about uh, you know pop music at all, you'll know that Red One is easily my favorite producer, and uh, he pretty much dominates the productions on this tr on this uh, album. Uh, there's only two songs on here, uh, mm, yeah. Uh, and uh, that one is done by the Futuristics and also features Pitbull and then also the track All I Ever Need which actually was done by Mr. Mahoney himself anyway other than that all the tracks are done by Red One and uh, yeah they're awesome super dance pop kind of releases I remember uh, it was actually my wife and I were in a Kohl's I think it was around Christmas time probably was like, I don't know, 2014 maybe, uh, and a song came over, uh, you know, just whatever was on the radio overhead, and I was like, man, what is this, what is this dance track that is like, just making me awesome right now, and, uh, you know, I listened for a lyric or whatever, and, uh, was not surprised at all to find out that A, it was Austin Honey, and that B, it was a song produced by Red One. Uh, that song in particular is What About Love, uh, the final track on this release. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, if you're into dance pop music, uh, definitely give this guy a shot. Uh, I really am into him a lot. We've got credits and some pictures here. It folds out to a nice dreamy picture of our, of our guy Austin here. So yeah, if you're into pop music at all, which you may or may not be, uh... Oh. Man, there's that crow... What is with me in that crow noise? I'm not sure what that noise is. But I, for whatever reason, I keep on making it. Uh, so yeah. Austin Mahoney, The Secret. Uh, really happy to finally get this. I need to pick up his new one. Uh, but he's, like, signed to, like, a... Like a Japanese imprint now. So like it's like a super expensive import. So I don't know. Plus, plus I think he's not working with Red One as much on that one. So that's a uh, a little more uh, risky in terms of why I like it. By the way, I like this now that I notice it. Uh, one of the executive producers for this album is uh, Brian Birdman Williams, big Birdman fan. All right, last release. Uh, this is this is a fun one. Uh, I, 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 it's not like I, I, I don't mention this constantly or anything, but I've mentioned it a couple times. Uh, my wife is a big Nougat's on the Block fan, and uh, almost 100% certain that uh, her fandom, which introduced me to the Nougat's on the Block, uh, their reunion debut, uh, The Block, which came out in 2008, was a pivotal and the most important album which got me into uh, pop music and uh Anyway, uh, she's number one, her, that's her number one artist, and uh, and uh, her first ever uh, release that she had ever had by them was their album Hangin' Tough. Uh, she had been sort of aware of them prior to that, but uh, her older brother's girlfriend uh, had the had the tape, and uh, what song was it? She said, I think she said it was. Uh, I'll Be Loving You Forever, I think is what the song. Uh, she had decided that that was uh, their song. And so anyway, uh, her older brother uh, 
said, oh, this is maybe my, something my little sister will be into. So he got, he gave her a tape uh, of it. So uh, anyway, uh, I thought it would be kind of cool just because that was like her first uh, ever uh, release from that band was the cassette version of Hangin' Tough. I thought it would be cool to uh, just pick that up too and add it to my collection. So, sort of to have maybe like a semi-brag over her. <laughs> Not that you know, she's willing to listen to it. She's more than willing to listen to whatever she wants. So anyway, now that I'm done rambling a lot about this, uh, here it is, Hanging Tough, on cassette, Nougas on the Block. This is their uh, their second album after their uh, self-titled release. Uh, this came out in 1988. Uh, yeah, you probably are more than uh, aware of probably maybe the songs, uh, the t- title track, Hanging Tough, which uh, listening to the tape, I was I sort of never really had thought of it before. Uh, like I was kind of surprised really that feels like that's a, that's an album opener but uh, at least uh, they did put it as the second track on the on the B, or the first track on the B side or the or try side two as it's labeled here so oh, I'm not even showing it oh, yeah I am uh, and then also you probably know uh, 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 you got it the right stuff which it's funny on the tape it just says the right stuff as opposed to uh, including the parenthetical or, or includes just the parenthetical doesn't include uh, you got it uh, anyway cool stuff uh, one track uh, that I you know it's not I you know I'm not really so much into their 80s material as much as I am I'm into their modern material as the block was largely produced by red one uh, but one song uh, that I really wasn't uh, familiar with that much you know I probably listened to this album you know, a couple times, you know, thoughtfully, and, you know, I've maybe heard a few times over my years just, you know, being with my wife. Uh, but uh, What You Gonna Do About It was really into that song. That's a cool song. But yeah, it has other ones on here uh, that I really like. Uh, like My Favorite Girl. That's a cool track. But yeah, anyway, uh, just kind of a cool thing to pick up. Uh, Hanging Tough. New Kids in the Block. Songs written by Maurice Starr, except for I Remember, written by Maurice Starr and a couple other people. And my favorite girl, written by Maurice Starr, Donnie Wahlberg, Jordan Knight, and Danny Wood. All members of Nukas in the Block, if you're not aware. Alright, that's enough talking about this release. Just another, like I said, fun one to kind of pick up. Nukas on the Block, Hanging Tough. All right, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you're familiar with any of these releases, please let me know what you think of it. And damn, are we at 38 minutes? Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> have a good day.